Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a live voting app using Socket.io and SQL Alchemy. So these are going to be done in Flask. So of course, it's the Flask versions of Flask SQL Alchemy and Flask Socket.io. And I've already done a little bit of setup just to save some time so this video isn't too long. So let me talk about that first. I already have a table in my database set up that will hold the results from my poll that I'm going to create. So basically the idea is um, a user will come in and vote for either one or two. Of course, in a real poll, you probably have either people or just some better options than numbers. But they'll vote for one or two and then the results will get collected in this table here. Uh, right now, there are three votes for number one and just one vote for number two. And that's going to change once I built the app. And then on this page is uh, the page that will connect using Socket.io. And I have two buttons here, vote one and vote two. If they hit vote one, obviously it will vote for number one and vote two for number two. Uh, right here, it's an even 50-50 split. But as the votes come in, from either the user that is logged in here or um, other users, this bar will change. So um, the more votes for vote one, the green bar will grow. And the more for uh, number two, the yellow bar will grow. And it will go back and forth depending on uh, what's going on. So let me show you the code that I have. Uh, here is the HTML file that I just had open. So basically uh, the results so I have some imports here, some script imports. I have um, Socket.io, the client side library. I have jQuery and I have Bootstrap loaded. And then I'm connecting to Socket.io, but I'm not doing anything with that connection yet. I have the two buttons here and then I have the two progress bars down here. And then in my main file, uh, my Python file, I'm setting up Socket.io and SQL Alchemy. Um, I'm connecting to a database here um, to the table that I just showed you. And then I have my SQL Alchemy model. And then I'll run the app once I have everything ready. So the first thing I want to do is I want to work on the Python side of it. So the server side of uh, the voting. So what I'm gonna do in this one, unlike the last video, I'm gonna use my own custom event. And this event is going to be a vote event. So I'll create the decorator, socket.io.on, and then vote. So once a vote comes in, I want to do something. So I'll have a function down here and I'll call it handle vote. And it will have one parameter and I'll just call that parameter um, ballot. So ballot will just be a number. It's either going to be one or it's going to be two. So now what I wanna do is I want to insert that vote into the database. So take that ballot and put it in the database. So uh, I'll create a new object called vote, which is based off the results table that I already have created. Um, and then simply vote is going to be equal to ballot. And then using typical Flask equal alchemy style, I add vote to the database and then I commit it. And then once I've committed it, I want to then send back to the client the number of votes for each uh, option. So I wanna send back the number of votes for vote one and the number of votes for number two. So I'll say results one is going to be uh, a query on results. So results.query filter by vote equals one and then count. So that will give me the number of votes for number one. And then I'll just do the exact same thing for number two, the only difference being vote is equal to two. Now, of course, this, is, this isn't the most efficient way of doing this, recalculating the count every time a vote comes in, but for demonstration purposes, and just to keep this video simple, this is what I'm doing here. So with results one and results two, I then have the uh, number of votes for each option. So instead of sending, I can't send because I'm using a custom event. So I'll emit something and I'll call this event vote results. And then in this vote results, I'll pass back a JSON object with results one and results two. 
And then so everyone gets it. I'll set broadcast equal to true. So all the clients connected get constantly updated with the new vote count. So that's it for the server side. That's all I have to do. So vote um, gets stored in the database. And then I get the count of the results as they exist at the moment of the vote being cast. And then I return those results to the client. And then it will be up to the client to manipulate that progress bar to show uh, how many votes are for each. So I'll save this and I'll get this server started just to make sure that everything is working correctly. So python.main. Uh, and I already made a mistake. There should be a colon there. Okay, so it looks like the server started up correctly. And now let's move on to the client side. So the client side will be slightly more complicated. Uh, not too much more complicated, but um, slightly so. So the first thing I want to do is allow the, the client to actually cast a vote. So I have two buttons, uh, vote one and vote two, that are used to send a vote for either one or two. So I'll just add click events to those buttons. So um, let's say vote one on click. So here I want to emit my vote event so it gets picked up by the server and I want to send the number one over. Pretty simple. I'm voting for number one and vote two is pretty much the same thing. There's, they're pretty much the same function. And then socket.emit a vote and two. So when I emit these votes on the server side, it gets picked up here because it's listening for a vote event and then it runs this code down here. So I can test that now. So I'll save this and I'll refresh. And right now in my database, let me refresh this. I have uh, three votes for number one and just one vote for number two. So I'll cast another vote for number two. Vote two and let's see if it uh, was inserted into the database. Refresh. And there we go. Okay, so another vote was inserted for number two. So I'll hit vote one, two, and two. So I just added one vote for number one and then two more votes for number two. So I'll refresh this and I see one more for vote one and two more for number two. So it's inserting into the database correctly. Now the last thing I need to do is actually listen for that that uh, that vote results. And from there, I can manipulate that progress bar to show uh, the current vote progress. So I'll create um, a listener for vote results. So socket on vote results and then function, and I'll just call the uh, parameter results. It's going to be a JSON object. So Flask Socket.io will automatically convert this dictionary into a JSON object for you. So with results, uh, the first thing I wanna do is get the total number of votes that have been cast. So I believe it's eight. I'm not going to use the primary key to count it. I'll just sum the number of votes for number one and the number of votes for number two to get the total. But there should be eight. So I'll create a variable. I'll say total votes. And it's going to be results dot, um, what did I name it? Uh, just results one. So results one plus results dot results two. So that gives me the total number of votes that were cast. And now what I need to do is I need to figure out the percentage um, of votes for each one. So let's say there are five votes for number one and 10 votes for number two, then 33% of the results will be for option one and 66 for option two. So I wanna figure that out so I can pass it to the progress bar and manipulate the, the size of it so I can see the results. So to do this, uh, I'll say, um, one percent is going to be the percentage for option one. So it's simply math dot round, and then I'll take 
uh, results dot results one. I'll divide that by the total votes and I'll multiply it by 100 to give me an integer that I can then convert to a percentage in the CSS. And then 2% is simply 100 minus 1%. So I don't have to do a separate calculation for number two. And then the final thing I need to do is I need to change the CSS on those um, results progress bars. So I'll do results one dot CSS width is going to be 1% plus percent. And then results two dot CSS is going to be 2% plus that. Okay, and I spelled this wrong, but that should be it. So this should be enough to listen for the vote results and then to uh, manipulate that progress bar. So I don't have to restart the server, I just have to refresh. And now once I cast the vote, the progress bar should move if I did everything correctly. And it just did. So it looks like there are more votes for number two than there is for number one. So if I cast another vote for two, the size of the yellow section gets bigger. And if I keep voting for two, the yellow section, well, looking at it now, it looks kind of orange. So I'll say the orange section is getting bigger. And then if I vote for number one, the green section gets bigger. And just to show that this works for Just to show that it works for multiple clients, let's say this one votes for number one. You see how they both start changing at the same time. So if you were really making some kind of polling app, you'd probably only allow a user to vote once, of course. And then if you wanted to, you can always have the results update for that one user, even though they can't vote again. But they can see it. Uh, the results change as other people are voting, which would be a nice feature if you figured you had to create something where a lot of people would be voting for something in a short amount of time. Probably wouldn't work too well if the polls were open for a really long time. But if it was like an hour or so and there were a lot of people voting, this would be cool to see the progress of the votes. So that's basically all I want to show you. I just want to show you how you can kind of combine Socket.io and SQL Alchemy. I mean, there's no magic combining them, but you can use them both at the same time to create um, an app with more functionality. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about using either Socket.io or SQL Alchemy, just leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.